What's up y'all? This is Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to talk about this idea of the first principle. The first principle is kind of a confusing looking formula that when you first look at it that you you kind of say what is going on with this thing? I don't even understand what's happening with this. But as you start breaking it down piece by piece and kind of as we've been working with it, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Let's take a look and see what it's all about. The first principle is really all about finding the slope at a given point. Now when we try and find a slope at a given point, what we really need is we need to find a tangent line at this point. The problem is if we have a tangent line, you can even see where this tangent line is going, we need another point off of the curve. The only information we have is this curve. If we were to put uh, information into our equation, we're only going to get values on here. So how do we find a line that's going to contain values that exist off the curve out here? This, this little guy known as Newton, you may have heard of him, he came up with this idea. Actually him and this other guy, uh, Gottfried Leibniz, both around the same time came up with uh, this idea. They either discovered it or maybe they invented it. I don't know. It's a nice TOK question for you. Was math discovered? Was math invented? There's easily arguments going either way. So uh, good, good question for your TOK class. What happens is we've got some value x and uh, f of x. That's our y value. And what we need to do is we need to get this distance from here to here, this distance in our x's. We want to get this thing really close. And Newton called this distance h, but he wanted that distance h to get as close as possible to zero. Now this guy Leibniz, he used the term dx, and he wanted that to approach zero. Um, so that's why you sometimes see h used, sometimes you'll see the term dx used. But what's happening is we've got some value x, and we're going to move over on our number line to a second point x, and that second point uh, might be uh, x plus h, let's say. Let's, let's use h for this case just because it's a little bit easier to write. So this distance, dx, or, or, or we could even just say, just so you can follow along, x plus dx, that change in x. This is our x value for this coordinate. And our y value then, x plus h, our y value would be f of x plus h. So really all we're doing is we're taking this x value and we're dropping it back into our function. So now we've got two points on our function, or on our, yeah, on our curve. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this change in x so small that it's practically zero. So even though here it looks like we've got a large distance between these, we want to assume that this is infinitely small. So this idea of the derivative is uh, comes from our slope equation where we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which we also call our delta y over our delta x, our change in y over our change in x. Now, if we look at these points over here, we would consider this our x1, this would be our y1, this would be our x2, this would be our y2. So we've kind of plotted these things out. So we're going to try and find, we're going to find this, this distance, right? We're going to find that line. We're going to find this line, but we're again, bringing this point all the way down here. We're just imagining this thing getting really, really close as that distance gets close to zero. So we use this, this notation of dy over dx. dy dy being this distance right here. Here's our change in y, our infinitely small change in y. Here is dx, our infinitely small change in x. And when we, when we look at this, this is kind of considered like for your average rate of change, average rate of change, and rate of change, change, and this is for our infinitely small, small uh, change. So we kind of re reserve the lowercase uh, dy dx for this infinitely small change. So that's why delta y, delta x, this is like Greek, a Greek letter dy dx, 
but we're using the Roman uh, dy dx to, to refer to an infinitely small change. So this infinitely small change, so these, these two things are kind of linked, right? These two things are kind of linked, but this one is infinitely small. This one is your average. This is going to be getting, we're going to have our limit as h approaches zero for f of x plus h, there's our y2, minus f of x, there's our y1, over x2, x plus h, minus x1. And this is kind of the building of our, of our first principle. So if we want to simplify this a little bit further, we can see that dy of dx is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. And all I'm doing is just simplifying the denominator here because all the rest of this stuff you would have to work with if you were actually going to work through one of these problems. And that's going to be over h. So this, this here is our first principle. This says if you take any curve and you take this, uh, a second point and subtract the first point and you make this distance infinitely small, you're going to find the slope at that, at that first point. And you're going to find the slope at this point, the f of x, uh, the black point. And this is so huge because this is kind of marrying the ideas of theory and practicality. So we want this distance to be so small that it's practically zero, but it's not. We cannot have these points be on top of each other. If the points are on top of each other, then that h value would equal zero. The x values would be the same, so you would be dividing by zero, which is an undefined function. You can't do that. So we need them to be so infinitely close that they are practically zero, but they're not zero. So it's this really kind of cool idea of how we can, how we can combine these two things and, and build this whole idea of calculus off of this. And, and, and this is why it's called the first principle. This is like the foundational idea behind the whole thing. So try and wrap your head around this. Uh, that's really why we do what we do with derivatives. Uh, we, we, or how we get to where we go with derivatives is using this fundamental uh, definition of derivatives or the first principle. I hope that helped clear things up a little bit. I'll talk to you in the next video.